Welcome to the Command and General Staff Officer course, Class of 2020 Graduation Ceremony. This 10-month course develops warfighting and adaptive leadership skills necessary for military officers to be proficient in multi-domain operations. Singing the National Anthem is Major Curtis J. Lofton, a member of the graduating class. The invocation is given by the CGSC Chaplain, Major William J. Smith. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight O'er oh, the ramparts we watched Were so gallantly streaming And the rocket's red glare The bombs bursting in air Gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave? Oh, the land of the free and the home of the brave. Please bow with me as I pray. Almighty God, I thank you for this day and this opportunity that we have gathered to celebrate with these leaders. This has certainly been a unique and challenging year for all. And as we begin this ceremony, and I pray, O oh God, that they begin to cut sling load, I ask your blessing over them. Watch over them and grant them safe travels to their next duty station. As they move across the force and serve as operational leaders, I ask that you would cause them to succeed and grant them patience when needed, wisdom for every decision, and courage in the heat of battle. And this I ask and do so in Jesus' name. Amen. It's my distinct honor to introduce the 40th Chief of Staff of the Army, General James McConville. Sir, thank you very much for investing time in this year's class. Congratulations, we live in challenging times. Things are very different than they were when you first arrived. The Army's been through tough times across our history, and we will continue to find a way to prevail. 26 years ago, in 1994, my peers and I were about to graduate from Command General Staff College. At that time, our Army was strong and unmatched. We had just decimated the Iraqi Army during Desert Storm. We didn't anticipate the rise of terrorism the tragic events of 9-11, all the conflicts in Iraq, Afghanistan, and Syria. And I'm sure at the start of this course, no one expected this would be how it ends. You will be moving into key leadership positions with the responsibility to maintain readiness under COVID-19 conditions. This will be your first challenge, one that I'm confident this course has well prepared you for, one that I'm confident that you will help lead your units and our Army to success. If you don't remember anything else I say today, I want you to remember two things. People first and winning matters. People first is a philosophy. And I believe if you take care of your people, your soldiers, your families, and your civilians, and if you create a command climate where everyone takes care of each other and treats everyone with dignity and respect, you will have a great cohesive team which will win on any battlefield. 
And winning matters in the Army is an attitude. When we send the United States Army somewhere, we don't go to try hard, we don't go to participate, we go to win. And that's what the American people expect, and that's why winning matters. In every endeavor, we must define what winning looks like for our soldiers. So what does that mean for you? If you can define what winning looks like for your unit, and you can build cohesive teams of highly trained, well-disciplined, and physically fit professionals, then you will be extremely successful. Congratulations again on completing this important milestone. Your success and your next job is critical to our Army and our nation. Stay connected to the people you got to know during your time at Leavenworth. The Army only gets smaller from here. We are proud of all of you, and we trust you to lead our Army in the decades to follow. Stay healthy, stay safe, Godspeed, and good luck on your next rendezvous with destiny. People first, winning matters, and we remain Army strong. It's my distinct honor to introduce our keynote speaker, the Honorable Ryan McCarthy, the Secretary of the Army. Sir, thank you very much for taking time with all you have going on to invest in this year's class. Congratulations on your graduation from the Army's Command and General Staff Officer course. I'm sorry I won't be there to do this in person, as I always enjoy the opportunity to engage question and answers in Eisenhower Hall. The audience are always unrelenting and candid, and it's perfect. This year, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, we need to do things differently. But differently isn't necessarily bad. And despite these unprecedented and challenging times, the mission in the Army carries on. The schoolhouse always does a great job of bringing incredible speakers during the year to provide perspective and concepts that will continue to shape you long after you graduate. So with that in mind, I'd like to tack on three final touch points, power, influence, and relationships. This is a transition point in your careers where you step into your new role as field grade officers. Unofficially, you'll be known as Iron Majors, and that's not by accident. The Army simply expects more from its field grades as your power shifts from positional to organizational. As challenging as your careers and the mission have been thus far, compared against an increasingly complex and dangerous world, the Army will once again look to you to achieve the mission and preserve the force. Now, your approach to problems, your ability to influence stakeholders, and the behaviors you exhibit continue to evolve in order to be successful. You have spent your company grade years learning and leading at the small unit level and commanding subordinates from a position of power. Many of you shortly will serve on general staffs where your power will shift to organizational and personal. Senior leaders will look to you and make critical decisions based on your assessments. You must be confident and competent. In your new role as field grade officers, you will step into larger roles and increasingly complex problems. Much of this work will be joint and combined, working with peers and organizations that you will not have the control or authority over. Mission success and subsequently your own success will depend on your emotional intelligence, the relationships you foster, and your ability to build teams. This means you'll have to recognize your own emotions and those of others and manage them. Emotional intelligence is the key to success and fortunately is a learnable skill that can ultimately be practiced day after day. It's about understanding other people's intentions and how they relate to your own. The Army and the world are shockingly small. You'll undoubtedly see your CGSC classmates again as you all continue to advance in the Army. Rely on, maintain, and continue to build upon your relationship-based network. The same Thai exchange students I studied with in college and the same British SAS officers that stood next to me as we launched into Afghanistan are now the general officers running their country's militaries. The difference between a door opening, a piece of paper moving off a desk, and ultimately mission success is often underpinned by a single personal relationship. Finally, in your relationship-based network, there are two dynamic variables. 
one that will pull from you, and one that will push you. You will have the opportunity to shape the future force, in part through mentoring junior officers. As the Army moves to a talent-based management approach to its assignments, it is your responsibility to know your people, help identify their unique skills, and guide them in the direction where they can realize their potential. Even Eisenhower had a mentor, a guy named George C. Marshall, and Marshall had Pershing, and so on. The second relationship dynamic is partnership. The chief, Sergeant Major, and I are battle buddies. We work out together, we eat together, and use each other as sounding boards. We look each other in the face when we have conversations. We have peers to lean on when you help distribute the weight on your shoulders. And because we know each other, we know each other's goals, our individual strengths and weaknesses, our families, this results in a collaborative effort with a stronger end result. No one has to go this alone. Again, congratulations to you and your family. This is a huge milestone in your careers, and you should be incredibly proud. You are continuing to serve the nation at a time of need, and what you do matters. Good luck to each of you Iron Majors, and I look forward to seeing you in the field. Thank you. Each year, students attending CGSOC in residence are encouraged and challenged to compete for these prestigious awards that require them to go above and beyond the required coursework. Although there is only one winner for each award, those who competed for them are commended for having stepped up to the challenge. The General George C. Marshall Award is presented to the distinguished United States graduate from each class. The General Marshall Award is awarded to Major Sarah M. Gerstein, Military Intelligence. The General Dwight D. Eisenhower Award is presented to the distinguished international officer, graduate of each class. The General Eisenhower Award is awarded to Major Alessio Battisti, International Military Student, Italy. The General Colin L. Powell Interagency Award recognizes the distinguished interagency student in each class. The General Powell Award is awarded to Mr. Dennis Hernandez, Defense Intelligence Agency. The General James M. Wright Award is presented to the Distinguished Master Logistician in each class. The General Wright Award is awarded to Major Sean A. McFarling, Medical Services. The General George S. Patton Jr. Award is presented to the Distinguished Master Tactician in each class. The General Patton Award is awarded to Major Evan E. Roderick, Armor. The General Douglas MacArthur Award recognizes scholarship and professional writing on the subject of military leadership. The General MacArthur Award is awarded to Major Victoria Fernandez Sullivan, Medical Corps. The Iron Major Award goes to the student who finishes first in a grueling series of events designed to test endurance and strength. This year's Male Iron Major Award is presented to Major Kyle Payne, Infantry. This year's Female Iron Major Award is presented to Major Jennifer Purser, Military Intelligence. The Ardor Darby Award is awarded to a student for excellent scholarship and writing in military history. The Ardor Darby Award is awarded to Major William A. Watts, Armor.
The Arter Donovan Award goes to the class graduate who earned the highest overall grade point average for the year. The Arter Donovan Award is awarded to Major Craig Massey, Special Forces. The General John J. Pershing Award recognizes the outstanding non-resident graduate from each of the four annual advanced operations courses of distance learning. The General Pershing Award is awarded to Major Linda K. Chung, Civil Affairs. The Major General Han Schloop Award recognizes the importance of relationships developed among the network of friends and professional acquaintances made while attending the Command and General Staff College. The General Schloop Award is awarded to Captain Abdel Aziz Ali Oru, International Military Student, Benin. The Excellence in Information Warfare Writing Award is presented each year to the student who excels in research and writing on the subjects of command, control, communications, computers, and intelligence. It encourages CGSE students to study these subjects and provides opportunities for the publication and dissemination of the results. The Excellence in Information Warfare Writing Award is awarded to Major Mark D. Podrazik, Military Intelligence. The Beerer Brooks Award is awarded for the most outstanding Master of Military Art and Science thesis. The Beerer Brooks Award is awarded to Major Sarah M. Gerstein, Military Intelligence. The Homeland Security Studies Award recognizes research excellence in homeland security, homeland defense, and defense to support civil authorities. The Homeland Security Studies Award is awarded to Major Nicholas C. Danielson, United States Air Force. The Excellence in Joint Service Warfare Award reflects superior knowledge and leadership of joint, multinational, and interagency instruction the Excellence in Joint Service Warfare Award is awarded to Major Andrew D. Sivanich, Special Forces. The Father Donald Smythe Award recognizes excellence in military history. The Father Donald Smythe Award is awarded to Major Alessio Battisti, International Military Student, Italy. The Simon Center Interagency Writing Award recognizes scholarship that advances interagency cooperation, coordination, and collaboration. The Simon Center Award is awarded to Major Benjamin E. Chinsky, Special Forces. The Lieutenant Colonel Boyd McKenna Harris Leadership Award is presented for recognized superior research by a resident CGSOC student in the field of organizational leadership. The Lieutenant Colonel Boyd McKenna Harris Award is awarded to Major Brent J. Stone, Cyber Operations. The Brigadier General Benjamin H. Grierson Award goes to the student who demonstrates excellence in strategic studies. The General Grierson Award is awarded to Major Sidney H. McMath, Armor. The Educator of the Year program recognizes teaching excellence among the faculty members of the U.S. Army Command and General Staff College. Each school and teaching department nominates their outstanding military and civilian educators taking into account classroom observations and student feedback. All nominees are then observed teaching a class and are interviewed by the selection board. The CGSC Military and Civilian Educators of the Year advance to TRADOC's Educator of the Year program. The CGSC Military Educator of the Year is Lieutenant Colonel Samuel P. Rubino, United States Air Force. The CGSC Civilian Educator of the Year is Mr. Nils S. Erickson, 
Department of Logistics and Resource Operations. Since 1974, when Congress enacted legislation authorizing the Command and General Staff College to award the Master of Military Art and Science degree, 3,517 degrees have been conferred to the United States and international graduates of the Command and General Staff Officers course. Ladies and gentlemen, the CGSOC Class of 2020 Class Leadership and Staff Section Leaders.
Ladies and gentlemen, each year the CGSOC class commissions a gift that is presented to the Command and General Staff College. This year's gift is in commemoration of the 75th anniversary of the end of World War II. The Command and General Staff College class of 2020 has commissioned artist Mr. James Dietz and together present the class gift, Home is the Hunter. Home is the Hunter depicts a fictional U.S. Army officer from the 101st Airborne Division returning home from World War II. The soldier himself is absent from the painting. We can imagine him having recently returned home, off scene, embracing the family in the photographs on the nightstand. Perhaps the dress uniform, still crisp and ready for wear, three quarters of a century later, is laid before us in present day. Our soldier is regaling great-grandchildren, knee-high to a grasshopper, with stories history failed to record. Or maybe the fictional major, now attending the Command and General Staff College, the grandchild of our World War II veteran, quietly remembers the grandfather who served before and aspires to the legacy of the greatest generation. To all those who came home, and to all those military and civilian throughout the world conflict who made the ultimate sacrifice, the Command and General Staff College Class of 2020 commemorates the 75th anniversary of the end of World War II. Ladies and gentlemen, we present to you the graduates of the Command and General Staff Officers Course of 2020. We wish all of our graduates and their families only the best of luck in their next assignments.